hand. One of them says uh, Tierra del Fuego, which is sort of Spanish Latin for land of fire. And uh, there's a lot of maps from the 13-1500s about the four Bargas Islands in the North Pole. I could show you these maps for about an hour. I've been sent tons of these of people who are into modified history. What are these four islands at the North Pole? And what happened in the 1700s? They just ripped all these out of the history books. Why would all these people doing cartography put these four, four islands at the North Pole? There was a book, uh, I think it was a Norwegian fisherman. They say it was fiction, but when you read it, it's written like a real tale. He says he went fishing to the north, it was in the 1930s or something, with his son, and they went through this this door, this mountain, and they came to this beautiful place with these tall humans. They spoke of this mythical place in the north. Yeah, sounds crazy, but you can look at the Greek myths of Hyperborea at the north, the Tibetan myths of Shambhala at the north. You can look at the Tar Tartaria myths in North Russia of mythical places in the north. And they speak of this place called Hyperborea at the north. I'm not sitting here saying I believe in it. I'm just saying this is information that is out there. Hyperborean boats. Now, this isn't a new thing. The Maya used to believe in this level plane. The, Nor the Norse mythology used to believe in this level plane. The Americas believed in this level plane. The Celtic, Chinese, Egyptian, almost everywhere around the world, they believed in this level plane with a local sun and moon. And it's just 500 years ago, these Jesuits came in and they pushed this in. Greek, Dionysus, even some ancient Christian art shows like stars close, sun and moon close. Some Kabbalistic art, this is uh, from the 1940s, again shows this sort of dome. A lot of mysticism in hermetic alchemy, hermetic philosophy shows this sort of reality is enclosed, or this, at least that the sun and moon are close. Uh, a lot of us looking into this are believing in electromagnetics, uh, torus fields. So we're in some sort of torus field that's generating electromagnetic energy. The northern lights only come out of the north. I really believe they don't exist in the south. I think this is a lie. I've never had proof shown to me that northern lights exist in the south, uh, Australia Borealis, whatever it's called down there. I believe they're just uh, they're a part of this torus field. There we go, an electromagnetic torus field. But again, this is very new. There's not that many people looking into this. In Sydney, they've got a, a giant map like this for no reason in a park. <laughs> there's a lot of films, there's some stuff online. You can see there's about 50 films. Hollywood are putting it in your faces, these sort of level maps. But with you know, people like Rudolf Steiner and the Sri Ram Bhagavatam, the main Vedic scripture about this level earth, they both sort of say you're never going to fully understand it from within it because it's at such a high frequency of consciousness that to understand the whole cosmology from within it is not really possible. But in where we are now as a species, we're very rational. We need to know how everything works and put it in a box. So it's quite hard for people to revel in the mystery but with this cosmology, we do have to, at the moment, revel in some of the mysteries because we don't have all the answers. But some of these people said this a long time ago, we're not going to know it all. But some people freak out, like this woman. She says, you don't know, the, you don't have the, the complete replacement, so she freaks out. That's a common reaction in today's world, and it's not the first time you see that. So a quick look at the sky luminaries. The sun. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I could theorise for hours, but I don't know what it is. A high frequency, maybe interdimensional projection, we don't know what it is. But it acts like a rainbow. Everyone who looks at it gets a different experience of it. So if I stand next to you and we both look at the sun, you'll see something a little bit different to I will. Everyone sees it a little bit differently, and that acts like a rainbow. The sun also creates this analemma over the course of a year. Uh, this again doesn't really work on a globe with the four crazy motions. This works very well on this map. So uh, I got sent this a week ago. There's these very intelligent astronomers who are on this level plane. They know the ball Earth's a load of rubbish. 
they've been modeling the sun and they're creating a torus filled energy with this sun and they're saying like I spoke to them a while ago they're saying yeah it's individualized for each human observer so this idea of it's a burning lump of gas in outer space this is just miles away from what we're believing and they're starting to model it yeah some sort of electromagnetic we we don't know what it is it's beyond our it's beyond our comprehension at the moment but with budget we can find out more the moon again we don't know what it is but we know it's there we experience it we experience that it lights itself um, we're running on time but in my free moon book it's free online i have a whole chapter on proof that the moon illuminates itself and i'm happy to accept emails and be debunked now the moon uh, we know this if they go around above us which is what's happening new moon they're together the sun and moon full moon they're exactly opposite so that creates like an electromagnetic handshake together opposite now i, just, I don't believe i just want to just open you up a bit because we always say <laughs> i don't believe it's coca cola in a glass but i'm saying i we say the old craters on the moon we don't really know that they're craters i'm not saying they're not i'm just saying open your mind a little bit this is a potato with electricity running through it you know, I'm just showing you that it might not be craters. You've got to really open your mind. We've been, got these labels, and it's just labels. One thing we do know is the sun and moon are the same size. I mean, p some people actually believe that the sun is 400 times bigger and 400 times further away, and it's just a random coincidence that they line up. And that's crazy. That's, for me, really crazy. Um, other sky luminaries. This is a fake image from NASA where they said they were looking at the Earth. This is the best uh, photo of Saturn I know. These are people with really good telescopes. I believe this. This is Saturn. <coughs> Anything that shows these great rings, this is all fake. This is the best. That's fake. This is real. This is the best telescope that I know of. And this is what you see. You see a white thing. Jupiter, fake. Fake. This is apparently Jupiter's moon from NASA. But when you actually get the best telescope you can get, this is what you see. Something in the sky, a luminary, these aren't moons, these are luminaries, and they just follow Jupiter around. So Jupiter's moving, and these little lights just say, yeah, I'm gonna hang out with you, Jupiter. There's nothing to believe they're a moon. They're just lights in the sky that hang out with Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. So you can do, there are people who are doing a lot of study in Venus, Mars, Saturn, Neptune. You can't land on these things. These are non-physical. They want you to believe it's gas and rock. These are like, okay, with stars as well, they're flickering. If you watch stars, they don't look like sun, a sun at all. They're flickering in the sky every tenth of a second. Pulse, pulse, pulse. And I've seen fractal geometry, like really beautiful fractal geometry. This is repeatable science. This isn't me just talking nonsense. This is repeatable science. Now, this star's interesting, Arcturus. You actually have a hole in the middle of it. It's like a donut, and these rings spin. This is repeatable science. You can get a good telescope and watch this yourself. Um, this is actually the same star pulsing. Here we go, the stars are not suns. A friend sent me this recently. He's got some really good kit. That's a star. Some people say maybe there's some sort of water up there. I don't know for sure. But it, acts, it could be construed as acting a bit like that. Uh, solo luminescence. If you collapse an underwater bu bubble with a sound wave, it produces light. You can actually create these stars in water. Going back to the moon, you can see people in the UK and Australia can see it at the same time, which doesn't work on a globe, but they see it rotated. Same with Orion, let's pick Orion. People in the UK and Australia, you could say Canada and Chile, different parts of the map. They see it upside down. And the reason for this is this, is because it's quite close. Now the reason you don't see all the stars in the sky is again convergence and the vanishing point. And we're getting into some complex stuff here, so I'm not going to go too deep. We could be here hours. But when you walk further north, you see more northern stars. When you walk further south, you see more southern stars. It's not to do with the curve. 
is to do with your vanishing point, the line of convergence. It's like if you walk further down a road, you see more of the road. That's what's happening. A bit like this. This is kind of brutal, but kind of like this. This is why everywhere in this reality can't see the North Star, Polaris, because of the vanishing point. But what the mainstream world says, it says it's because you're going across the curve. But it's just like the boat thing. It's not the curve, it's the vanishing point. Now, I don't want to get into deep stuff, but we'll just do a minute on this. So, it's believed that the stars are rotating. Uh, it's around 23 hours, 56 minutes, one rotation. But different places on the south, like Chile, South America, South Africa, can all see the same southern wheel. So we have a northern wheel in the sky and three southern wheels. These southern wheels are kind of identical. This has been an issue for people like myself looking into this cosmology. We haven't got a fixed solution on this yet. But it's highly probable, here's the issue we have again, that these three places, okay, the map's not right, something like this, we don't really know where Australia is, but these three places see the same stars looking south. It's highly possible there's some sort of refraction stroke reflection going on. Because when the north stars revolve, these southern stars revolve. And the thing that makes me think this is a reflection stroke refraction of the north wheel is because it moves at exactly the same speed. It does one revolution every 23 hours, 56 minutes. I think that number's right, I'll come on to that. There we go again. If you twist that piece of paper, those stars, that, those, that warping will ro rotate as well. It's highly possible a solution to this southern stars issue. It's a glass, oh, yeah, like it's a glass, a dome glass. But then it could just be the same wheel duplicated. I mean, you drive past a, a field of sunflowers, you go, yeah, there's many sunflowers that look the same. No one freaks out with that. So maybe they're just duplicated star wheels in the southern sky. And it was, you can't say that, but you, you can because you have duplicated flowers, you have duplicated trees. So this sort of gets around this the southern and northern wheel in the sky. So with the southern wheel in the sky, this I've come across recently, it looks very fractally. This is time-lapse photography. <coughs> Look at that, very fractally. Looks a bit like that. Very interesting. If it was a random cosmic big bang, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be getting things like this in the sky. That is high mathematical divine code fractal. Yeah. This is something, I mean, if you get this on YouTube, you can press pause and download this. This is all the motions in the sky that I believe are true, to do with the moon, the stars, uh, the planets, which I call wandering stars. These are different speeds and motions, and I talk about the precession of the equinox. It's just a lot of data, and I'm happy for someone to debunk or add to it. So. I see the sky as like a clockwork mechanism, like a dynamo. I'm an astrologer. So I see the sky as like a, a mechanism, like a clockwork that pushes energy into this reality for humans. And maybe to a point where it creates new souls with different types of souls to be born. So it's like a giant clockwork. So as an astrologer, if Mars is in a certain place, certain energy is coming in. If another planet's in another zodiac sign, different energy is coming in. So there's billions of combinations in the sky. It's very high intelligence. So I see it more as a clockwork dynamo of energy. And so did the ancients. It's just now in modern times where, yay, statism, statism slaves, we've started to say this is, you know, gas and rocks. So the sun tells you what time it is, the moon tells you what day it is, and the stars tell you what month it is, uh, just like a design timepiece. I'm a flat-off astrologer, and uh, I was an astrologer before, and it, it really, I really had to do some deep thinking. And what I found with clients is the, the astrology works better. I've changed a few things to fit this model, and I'm getting much better results with clients. And I've, there's a video on YouTube on my channel uh, about the astrology changes I've made. They're only small, about 10 20% changes. And if you look at astrology, all astrologers have always looked at a level Earth map. They've never brought the globe into it. Diagrammatically, it's always been a level Earth in the middle. 
yeah, astrology, if you want to learn a bit about yourself and you're into holistic, alternative sort of things, astrology is a big, big key. It's repeatable. It's a pure science. I've had meetings to do with money before and I've moved them to a certain date, certain transits. Boy, it really works, yeah? This isn't Mickey Mouse. But in the magazines, they want to make you think it's a load of rubbish. But you can use astrology. It's powerful. Also, with the sky luminaries, there are systems like the Kabbalah, where they talk into... They're invoking and evoking spirits in planetary spheres. Systems like hermetic <coughs> systems like the Arbatel, where they're looking at the sky luminaries very differently. Uh, meteor, meteor showers. There was one a couple of weeks ago. People believe these are rocks in the sky trying to get into this atmosphere. No, none of these meteorites have ever come into the atmosphere. And they say they burn up on entry. Now again, none of you have seen a meteorite shower, a meteorite go up from the horizon. For me, these are wisps of energy, wisps of light. There is no evidence to suggest these are rocks in outer space. If meteorites really existed, every week or every month, they'd be like, oh yeah, a meteorite landed there, or a meteorite landed there. Do any of you, have you ever, any of you ever seen a meteorite land on Earth? No. Have you ever seen it on the news? No. If you do, it'd probably be BBC, low rubbish. This is the biggest meteorite ever found. What do you make of, of, the, of the meteorite that um, supposedly went down in Russia a couple of years ago? In Chagabins. Could we wait till the end, please, so I can just flow through this section? Sure. Right. Cheers, guys. The, I'll come on to that at the end, if that's all right. With the, this is the largest meteorite ever found on Earth. This is the size of a small car. And then automatically you think, well, what about these giant craters? I've never known anyone that's seen these things fall from sky. I'm not saying they don't, but I've not seen enough evidence. This is the biggest one. What they say is with these craters, they say the meteorite vaporizes. They say it just vaporizes on impacts. So you've got these giant craters, nothing there. But then they say, oh yeah, there's a meteorite here, come and see it, you pay your 20 bucks, you go and take a photo, it's a tourist thing. There's not enough there for me. All these meteorites contain the same amount of nickel, cobalt, the same amount of metals. If we were flying through space, meteorites would all be very different. They all wouldn't contain the same amount of metals, the same percentage of the same amount of metals. There's something not right here. Could they be sinkholes from the past? Highly possibly. They could be some sort of sinkhole that happened a few thousand years ago, a few hundred years ago. I don't believe these craters are caused by these lumps of metal that vaporise. I've not seen enough evidence, but they teach us all this is fact. If meteorites landed here, you'd get one a month. Oh, a town got hit by a meteorite, 50 are dead. That would be a normal story once every few years. I've been here 42 years, I haven't heard that story once. The eclipses are probably the toughest part of this model, this true cosmology that I've been looking at. And I cover it, I cover different theories of this in the free moon book I have on my website. The mainstream model we looked at earlier doesn't really work. And I'll just cover this bit quickly. And if you're interested, you can look more into it. Because it would be a two hour chat just on the eclipses. There's the book, Flat Earth Advance, the moon, free to download. The lunar eclipse, is when the, the moon goes up and down. The sun goes round on the ecliptic. The moon follows the ecliptic. It can go 5% up or 5% down. When it crosses the ecliptic twice a month, it, that's a node, that's a lunar node. Now, every now and then, the lunar node, new moon, is at the new moon. Therefore, you have a lunar eclipse. When they're usually at new moon, so full moon, sorry, let me backtrack a bit, get my breath. This is full moon. Lunar eclipse. The sun and moon are opposite. You don't get a lunar eclipse every month because the moon is up to five degrees or down five degrees from this ecliptic. Once or twice a year, it will be on the ecliptic. So you'll get, in my opinion, an electromagnetic handshake or prana handshake between the sun and moon that makes the moon go through all its phases in like 10 minutes, an hour. It's got nothing to do with the shadow of the earth. The moon does it itself, and I believe it's from an electromagnetic handshake due to its alignment with the sun at a full moon. Again, most full moons, the moon misses the altitude of the sun. This is in depth in my free book. 
solar eclipse. Again, we saw earlier with the strange shadow how the mainstream model doesn't really work. Again here, we see these strange at the top on the globe, these strange patterns. At the bottom, we see it works well on this uh, level model. Again, we can do little experiments. It looks good. It seems to work. The shadow thing works. Now, this is what we witness. This is what we experience. We're told this is the moon going across the sun. As an astrologer, I know the moon is in that location. It can't be anywhere else. But people have taken this last week, they've taken these images from the solar eclipse, which is at new moon, and there's nothing there. There's no object there. There's just, there's nothing there. It's like the sun is eating itself and refreshing itself. It's like it eats itself and regenerates. Some people who are looking into this information like me believe there is a Vedic body, Rahu Ketu, going across the sun, not the moon. I'm really taken back by this work that I was sent last week where it doesn't look like anything is going across the sun. It looks like the sun eats itself. Then you would say, where's the moon? Because it should be there. Maybe, I'm not a proponent of this, but maybe the moon goes invisible at this time. Bear with me. 24 hours before a new moon, this is a picture, and the moon is barely visible. 24 hours after the new moon, it's like this again, barely visible. But the 10 hours before a new moon and 10 hours after a new moon, new moon's the time of the, the, the solar eclipse, when it happens, you can't, see, you can't see the moon. No human has ever seen the moon 10 hours before or after a new moon. So there's a few different things on the table here. But this is complex, the eclipses, and it's written in a book if you want to read it. Other people took these images the other day, orbs, some strange things in the sky. I know Santos Bonacci, another guy who looks into this work, he's a strong proponent that there's these translucent discs in the sky doing some divine dance and going across the sun. I can't rule that out either. There's some strange uh, shadows, shadow snakes. Shadow snakes. Uh, I can't really work out why these occur. I don't think the official story is very good. This was sent to me. There's a lens flare on the left, but bottom right of the, just before the eclipse, what's that? But just before the eclipse last week, uh, most of you probably know, there was chemtrails, a lot of chemtrails in America. So maybe Ketu, maybe Ketu is the archetype for the lunar node, a place in the sky. Maybe the sun eats itself when the lunar node is at the sun at a new moon. Maybe this is the sun refreshing, reinitializing, going into a new cycle. And I know how crazy that sounds off the bat to the rational man. So why now? Why it matters? The internet, simply the internet. This is why it's happening now. We've all got the biggest encyclopedia at our fingertips. Quick, we can digest a lot of information onto our phones. Internet. Underwater cables, we're all on very quick internet. And if we choose to research something, we can research it. We don't have to give, get these books off of the state anymore. Uh, it could be age of Aquarius, an age of revealing. We could get more esoteric. This sort of age of revealing where a lot of people are waking up to the fiat currency scam with its inflation and its debt interest. This sort of, some of these terror scams. Uh, it could be happening now because uh, the fiat currency thing is starting to wobble. It could be one of these uh, bloodlines in this sort of elite wanting this to come forward. One of these bloodlines could be like, let's bring this out now. And this is my face when someone says, why does it matter? <laughs> well, where am I? It matters. I want to know where I am. It's uh, the human mind always wants to know what's across the hill. What is this place? Where am I? Where am I having this experience? It's kind of like more important than, you know, golf or other things. It matters because they're, it matters because they're stealing money. A lot of money, 19 billion. I mean, they've stolen other trillions, which I spoke about in a video. Where's all these trillions of pounds going, trillions of dollars? They're, they could be taking it to other lands. They could be terraforming. You can't spend $5 trillion here. It's impossible. You buy a few houses and a few boats. <laughs> You probably could spend some of a few trillion here, but not all of it. Where's all this money going? Uh, we're living in a fake reality, I believe. This, this matters. They're putting us into a fake reality. 
They're putting your children into a fake reality where we could be hit by a meteorite and blow up, where the sun's going to explode, the kids are getting lied to, TV's lying to you, it matters. Big toxic companies are lying to you. It matters because the whole house of cards could come down. I mean, institutions, tax, people won't want to pay tax, the universities, the government, trust. This brings down a lot of the house of cards if people work out they've been lying about where we are. Why are they lying? Why the lies? Who benefits? Well, they're hiding something. I'm being sped up now just for the camera. It's time's running out. They're hiding who we are and they're hiding where we came from. That's the bottom line. They could be hiding free energy, hiding a creator, hiding spirituality, hiding more land, hiding resources, hiding that you're special in the center of the universe, hiding what's in Antarctica. Promoting atheism is a reason. I'm not associated with any particular silo. I feel that I'm a spiritual being on a path. But they're promoting atheism, which is the belief that something came out of nothing and turned into dinosaurs. Yeah, an atheist, yeah. Don't you believe in divinity? I don't believe in silly magic. Who created the universe? Came from nothing. <laughs> this true cosmology is toasting the globe in atheism. I get a lot of emails about this, and I've had people having massive kundalini awakenings just off of this sort of disinformation. So like, oh my God, it can't be random, and then pop, the kundalini's shot, and these people are spinning out. It's like popcorn. And it could be like a hermetic philosophy. We live in like a mental construct of some higher beings. I mean, everything's on the table. You can really play with your imagination. But the cosmology deception allows other things. It's like the umbrella lie, I believe, for like your fluoride, your vaccines, your... I could go into this for hours, but I won't. The modified history. That there's a lot of other lies that are allowed to flourish under this cosmology lie. Like the ozone layer. If we look into this, this is all cartoons again doesn't exist. This whole sun's burning, the ozone layer's a liar, the sun's close, it's within our atmosphere. They want you to believe you're at fault for natural cycles and they're going to cash you for it and you're going to put all your little bins out and you're going to do everything right because you're going to feel that you're the one at fault and they're going to control you and they're going to take your money and you're going to do it. I spoke to some people who are in the climate change groups in Sweden, climate camp, spoke to them at length, they phoned up their boss at climate camp and they said we quit. It's all rubbish. And there are some really good people in climate camp and in climate change, and they'll call me crazy. But if I say, show me the ozone layer, they'll show me a cartoon. Physical aliens is another psyop they're throwing in. Uh, we went to a crop circle recently, it's my beautiful wife, and they, wanted, they want you to sort of believe this is aliens, but this is just resonance. We don't know where this resonance technology is coming from, but it's resonance. Could be spiritual, could be technological, we don't know. But your children are believing this sort of dinosaur alien thing and a lot of people are growing up to be very selfish because they're only here once, they're sort of a random space monkey, so things don't really matter. I was going to look into modified history a little bit, but I'll give that a skip. All the trees in Russia are just 300 years old, that's not right. And that's where the myths of Hyperborea are. Tartaria has been uh, moved, removed from the history books. There was a place in North Russia called Tartaria. They just took it all out. So maybe they're trying to make us look in the wrong places. Uh, they might want us to look at this Maya site. This is uh, things they tell us are from lava. I don't believe this is from lava. They say, oh, melting, drying lava created these uh, geometric rock formations. This was in southern Spain. And these things, we don't know what these are. So the whole geology is a massive mess as well. They're lying about cosmology and geology and history. And once you start realizing they've lied about cosmology, you just start looking and there's lies everywhere. I have some people looking into modified history who've got some wild theories. We won't go into them. Okay, very quick, a few more slides left. Cognitive dissonance. Um, the thing is with the cosmology conspiracy, it's very big, it's too much to comprehend. It's quite predictable, the reaction of some people, like we saw earlier. Now I'm, it's a duck, so I'm going to call it a duck. So what I'm going to do, it looks like a flat earth, so I'm going to call it a flat earth. 
but I call myself a geocentric direct realist because if any of you go home and say flat earth it isn't going to go well for you because <laughs> people get really triggered if you say the words flat earth <laughs> people just think you're, they, they don't say it just say you're a geocentric direct realist look this is Rocky walking down the road hey guys the earth's flat go kill yourself the, I've been trolled online like handicapped space for cars the earth's flat sorry have a nice day <laughs> but like you heard earlier you just get abuse because what's happening in the subconscious people are getting destabilized because the subconscious knows where it is it's got a sense of where it is if you start playing with where someone is the subconscious gets very destabilized and the whole being energetic system gets a bit worried and the walls come up so there's a lot of these sort of like people who really defend the globe but they don't even know much about the globe model. I could run rings around them with, you know, I say to them, how far is the moon away? How fast do we spin? They don't even know the ball model, but they're defending it. And they're parroting these words like gravity, refraction, inertia. They're just parroting, parroting books. And they use these standard globe earth proofs which are easily debunked, like sticks in the ground, pictures from NASA, yeah, popular opinion, and they don't have actually proofs, it's a belief. Yeah, throwing a ball up on a train, it falls down, therefore spinning balls in a vacuum. I see what you did there, proving bendy water by an object falling down. Uh, we'll skip through a few of these, we've only got a few minutes. Coriolis, planes flying over a motionless plane. And then they say things, oh, well, you didn't go to school, and it's like, well, this, this is half the problem, mate. I and mean, if this was a load of rubbish, what I'm saying tonight, I would have been debunked years ago. And I would have gone, oh, okay, I was proved wrong, but okay, I'll move on with my life, no problem. But no one, there's nothing there. They haven't got anything. You know, it's not, the problem isn't uneducated people, it's pop, the problem is people not questioning education. Because it isn't education if they say, memorise these books and you'll be based, you'll get a grade based on how well you remember the books. That's mind control. You know, it's a theory tale, theory of evolution, theory of Big Bang, theory of gravity, heliocentric theory. Heliocentric theorios for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Part of an unbalanced diet. Right, so for medication, I mean, we, I'll be honest with you, this, this ball earth cosmology is theoretical science. It's, it's religious because it's belief-based, it's faith-based. It's almost going at a stretch, cult-like, because if you look at the definition of a cult, it's an intense interest or devotion to an idea. And the spinning ball is just that, it's just an idea. And there are people who don't believe the government, but believe NASA. But NASA's a part of the government. You know the government lies, you still trust NASA, you only die at woke. <laughs> <laughs> the truth's no longer hidden because people are hiding from it. It's but people, some people, they they start really spinning out when they research this. They start really like, am I on a ball? Am I on the flat? And it takes two, three months. You know, if you see any of your friends, I worked out this procedure really helps. Just give them from behind a quick one. <laughs> really helps. <laughs> I'll skip through these. A great guy like an old mystic, Neville Goddard. The subconscious never alters the accepted beliefs of man. It outpitches them to the last detail, whether beneficial or not. So the subconscious imprint, we add to it. Very nearly done. What next? So what's going to happen next is it's just going to get bigger. There's a million flat earth videos online this year. It's, it's just gone crazy. Just a few years ago, there was just five of us doing this. Now there's thousands of people. Every day, 4,000 new videos a day. It's one of the most trending things online, but they don't want you to know that. People want to go and tell people all the time. I mean, look at me, I'm running around. Oh, no. I'm like this, it's kind of weird. There's people spending big money in America for these giant billboards. Uh, activism in the UK. There's meetups, a lot of meetups in uh, the UK and America. Sticker drops are going on. There's even an app for people, friends to get together or dating. If you date, you know, if you're dating too many random space monkeys, you might want to look into that. 
Uh, but there's a lot of people seeing it as a hobby. They're like, oh, I got a new camera. I go out with my friends and look for curvature. So there's this sort of rainbow dust, popsicle, fun hobby thing. I haven't got a problem with that, but that's going on. It's a bit cheesy. But there's some serious people looking at cosmology. It's a serious business. And we're all cosmologists. You can say it doesn't matter, but each and every one of us is a cosmologist. We all want to deeply know where we are. There's more people listening to this new track. The governments and the media are really making it look crazy. They were saying, oh, these women are becoming flat earthers. They're crazy. Modern advertising. <laughs> this is something on TV soon where they're going to choose someone to go to space. They're going to choose a part, someone who's in on it, and they'll do a fake thing and everyone's going to have it on their app. You know, parents love it, schools love it. What we need is budget, that's what we need to go to the north, to go to the south, we need a couple of million bucks and we'll buy some drones and jets and we'll go and have a look. That's what's needed. I'm sure there's a lot of bankers in Zurich, if anyone knows anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but what this is, this is disruptive knowledge and it really defies the status quo. There are people in, in the elite that really don't want this coming out. It's very disruptive knowledge because it brings the house of cards down. Uh, but a lot of people are finding a stillness with this motionless earth. You're just like, ah, it's very zen, it's very motionless, stillness. And all this sort of modern day system just becomes like a cartoon illusion. And you just be yourself. It becomes much easier for a lot of people to be themselves. There's a lot of people going through Kundalini awakenings. Nearly done. A change of circumstance happens as a result of a change of your state and consciousness. But that's also vice versa. A change in your circumstance, like where you live, changes your consciousness. It's a two-way street. So what people have woken up to is they don't really know where they are, don't really know how we got here, don't really know what happened here. So it's like, we haven't really woken up to we know all this stuff. We've woken up to what we don't know. So we're in conscious amnesia, which is much better than subconscious amnesia. But we're in interesting times. It's just another minute or two. Uh, at the moment, I just want to make you aware that you know, this statism thing that everyone's sort of worshipping is very religious, this worship of state. This isn't going to be around too much longer. Ideas so good, they're mandatory. You're being watched, you're paying your tax, you're paying your inflation, you're getting hammered on your energy bills. Everyone's talking about it, it's all nonsense. There's a few at the top taking everything. Chip, there's people say, well, do you think you'll be chipped soon? You're already chipped in your, in your credit cards and in your passports. They're spraying stuff in the sky. These are the people you're giving your money to. Patented technology, they're spraying you. Maybe they're blocking the sun, this is what I think. Maybe we go in cycles and things are heating up. Maybe the ice wall's going to melt. Maybe the north's going to melt. Maybe they're trying to block this from happening. This is imagination and conjecture. But they're doing something in the sky and they're spending billions on it. Maybe they want to affect the climate. Maybe they don't want the ice to melt. But what I would put your attention to is the fiat currency thing. This is, uh, this is in its last throes. 19, billion, 19 trillion debt in America. Uh, when there was the big economy crash in 2008, it never really fixed itself. The charts are worse now. This is going to pop soon, and you need to have a little think. Stock market's completely overinflated. Derivatives bubble's completely overinflated. Venezuela's gone. This is just one domino. A box of eggs is like $200 in Venezuela now. I mean, it's broken. You can't fix Venezuela. It's broken. The economy's broke. You can't fix it. I mean, Greece, Malaysia, Malaysia, Ukraine, these are other countries and states on the edge of bankruptcy. What I would say is have a little look into cryptocurrency. Have a look at what Ethereum is. Have a little look. There are, this is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. There are a lot of smart people getting out of fiat currency into cryptocurrency. And this could be the vehicle when fiat dies or really starts to wobble. You don't want your cash in a bank. Diversify at least, have some land, have a house, have some money in the bank, have some cryptocurrency. But spend an hour or two looking at cryptocurrency. Because luckily some smart people come to see me a while ago and told me some stuff and I looked at some more stuff on my own. You want to be looking at this, <laughs> really. The ERC20 protocol could take over the internet and it could take over the next 10, 20 years of your lives online. Yeah, inflation, look what it's done. $20, you get a big bag of food in 1929, now you get nothing. Mm. Look at one Bitcoin. 
And people say, but cryptocurrency has no value. It does, because it has utility. It's a disruptive technology. Flat Earth's a disruptive knowledge. This is disruptive tech. It's decentralized. You can't control it. It's trust-based. You unbank the bank. You become your own bank. You cut out the middlemen. You cut out authority. It's anonymous. It's community-driven. It has utility, so it has value. People say, oh, Bitcoin, that doesn't have any value. It's just, no, it has utility. You can move money anywhere in the world in a, in a few couple of hours anonymously. That has value. And if you look into Ethereum, yeah, just a word of warning. If the fiat currency starts wobbling, you need to be on the crypto. It went from 4 billion to 8 billion. It was at 8 billion a year ago. The market's gone up to 150 billion in a year. And this is going to go to 1 trillion by 2020. As fiat goes down, crypto goes up. That's how, it, that's how it's modelled. So if things get wobbly in the world, you want to have a few crypto coins. But with all this talk, and thanks for bearing with me, I know it's a long one, what I'd say is we're all talking about externally where are we in the universe, but all that really matters is where am I internally in the universe. That's like the most important thing. But they're sort of linked. Because if you're on a spinning ball and you're a space monkey and you're only here once, that's going to affect where you are internally in the universe. So have a little think how, where you're at in the universe externally and internally, because it's really more important internally. And I, will, I had to rush the last bit, but I will leave it there. My work's at wakeywakey.com, the YouTube channel's Wakey Wakey. It's had about a million hits, so a million and a half hits. There's a lot of people, more people are on board with this sort of work than not. Have a look. Uh, look into other people. I don't have all the answers. Don't ever follow one person. Look around. Look and see what other people are saying. I'm just one guy. But I can tell you this, this spinning ball, that's a load of rubbish. That's nonsense, mate. And I'll just leave it there. So thank you very much for your time. <laughs>